one of the things uh, you do with an old bike that has got a history of repair work on the engine, for example, this one was had a rebore at 60,000, it's running at 86,000, so 20,000 odd, odd miles. It's ridden since it's had its new uh, piston rebore, big end bearings at 80,000. So that's what it says on paper. But one of the things we can do to test this is by using a PSI tester. Uh, I don't know yet what the exact PSI should be on this, but I'm going to register it anyway and then go and look online again. It's over 125 PSI. I think it's okay. But as I say, I'll let me go and check and see now what they say it should be. Fingers crossed it'll be okay. So I did uh, a little bit of research and this could help you understand uh, because it's not that obvious. Um, the specified compression ratio for a 350 bullet after 59, which is roughly my engine, was 7.75 over 1. Um, so to convert that to PSI, so we know exactly what's going on because that's how we test whether the engine's good or not. Compression ratios mean nothing without a PSI test. So the conversion is simple. So 7.751 you have to multiply that 7.75 by 14.696. This 14.696 is the atmospheric pressure at sea level. So we take 7.75 multiply by 14.696. We should get 1138, so 114, so we're, we're in spec. Hopefully that helps. Well, that's good news because uh, we're at 125 and the spec is 114. Um, that could be as a result of the rings bedded in nicely in the sleeve. And if we don't have to disturb that, there's really no reason to split the barrel and take the crankcase apart. Now that said, we still, once we take the head off, we've got to check to see whether there is any scuffing or any damage on the inside of the sleeve, any scarring. Um, but the head is going to be the tricky bit uh, more than the barrel. The barrel is fairly simple. The only other thing we need to check for is any play in the piston as we rotate the crank. If there's any sign, it really is, don't leave it, strip it, strip it out. But um, from the, uh, the information that I've received, that bike was redone fairly recently. It really isn't much point. The only risk, of course, I take is that if the gasket seal in the crankcase wasn't put in properly or torqued properly, I could get um, oil leaking uh, in that area, and um, that could uh, kind of set me back a little. But um, we'll just uh, make a judgment call as we strip it out.
that's much improved that I'm very happy with the finish the sleeve shows no sign of any scarring and we just keep that lubricated as we work on the other parts I don't want any of it rusting but there's no play in that piston whatsoever it feels really nice and tight the head uh, full of carbon um, so we use a brass uh, Dremel slowly clear the carbon off I also pour petrol down the back of both valves to see if there's any leaking as to whether I have to take them out or not because that means that the seating is uh, going to be releasing pressure but again the PSI showed a very high pressure so a combination of that information helps to judge whether we uh, need to do anything or not but in the meantime we give it a good clean and as you can see here uh, looks rather nice Right, now we're going to try and get the aesthetics of these uh, fins back again. I can't and don't want to replace this barrel with an aluminium one. I want to re repair the original. So there's two portions of the top cooling fin uh, snapped off. This is the smaller of the two. So what I'm doing here is grinding uh, a geometric shape, which is easier to trace, and cleaning that off. So that's a bit smoother now. Um, let's see how the plasma cutter works because I've never used a plasma cutter before so I've, um, obviously I couldn't do it with a camera but the template is now pretty much there here I'm scribing the shape roughly onto the mild steel there are the two templates so now we're going to cut them out um, so first of all I tried the plasma cutter and uh, what that is pretty crude for that level of tolerance shape, so that didn't really work, but I found that the angle grinder was the thing to use. Unfortunately, I couldn't show you a lot of the processes because I needed both hands and I didn't have the tripod, blah, blah, blah. But you can see they're quite a nice fit. I'm really quite happy with that. So now I've just got to bevel those edges. I started beveling the um, the ends, but I'll probably do that once once it's done, and then I can really clean up those corners. And with that side, it's come out really nicely. That should do fine. All right, the bevels have been put in now, so we're ready to fill these um, these grooves with uh, stainless steel welding. Uh, from the MIG welder so yeah next time you see it this hopefully should be done dare I say how, how hard can this be well let me tell you how hard it can be I should never have said that because now I'm having real problems with the with the MIG particularly because I don't really know what I'm doing so today I'm gonna grind all this off again and you can see this one actually broke off but the good news is that it is actually gripping it is actually going into the cast so unfortunately um, I have to do the start again there's the stainless steel in there make a few more adjustments on this MIG see if I can get this thing to work right that was better um, you can see the the weld has really gone in to both sides now it was a voltage issue on this uh, Lincoln. So with a few little tweaks and things, um, I got this, so I had to change the voltage here because this plate is slightly, slightly thinner. So um, this is the original old one. So I'm just gonna grind this all clean and it should look a lot better than, than what it is. But that, that's as a result of spot welding. Spot weld in the center, one out, second out, out, and, and so on and so forth, so that the cast iron, which doesn't expand as much, 
or as quickly as the mild steel, uh, you want to try and heat up the cast iron and not the mild steel. So when you when you weld, obviously the mild steel will will expand. So you've got to let it cool down to a point where you can weld again while heating the cast iron. And that's the trick. So you try and keep them together so that when when the motorcycle does get hot from the cast iron side first, obviously, because of the piston in the center, the mild steel will react last, if 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 you will, and expand. Uh, in a more controlled manner from the weld points. So it shouldn't ping off, but we'll see. I certainly don't want to see that. Um, so that's going to be cleaned off and uh, see how close I can get to the original base metal without compromising the weld. Because that is ugly. See the fins line up with these edges here. The weld I've pulled back as much as I can here. Found another crack here in the original cast iron which I've welded, so that's good. And then I've just rounded this off. Yeah, I'm really pleased with that. The thickness is good. I just hope it doesn't come off. And now we paint it, clean the engine off, get it all ready, and then we paint this black and you will not see anything. When cleaning the casing, you want to use a brass um, agitator brush on the end of a drill. That seems to do a really good job. Uh, you don't want to use anything harder than that, otherwise you'll damage and mark the casing. Once you've finished, uh, just transfer over to a nylon brush which then just cleans up what you've agitated and finishes it off as originally as it probably would have been when it came out the casting. Wrapped all the bright bits because we're going to be spraying um, heat resistant black onto these fins. I've given a degrease, cleaned it, cleaned in there with high pressure blasters. Um, so it's going to dry this out a bit. At last, <coughs> fins and repair work disappeared. Really nice.